so that the world today is actually living on, on, on one big lie a, a, about their own lives because the governments don't tell the truth they know about the visiting space people we have got a wrong story about our planets about our moon so our science is built on on on, on wrong uh, teachings and so on and so forth but where do the space people come from from mars and venus adamski claimed impossible according to science but still introductory space sciences a textbook of the United States Air Force Academy claims it is possible that UFOs originate from, quote, the planets in our own solar system. It furthermore confirms that one of four observed groups of extraterrestrials, quote, appear to be essentially the same as Earthmen, and that contacts, quote, may have already taken place secretly. Do they have bases on our neighboring planets? We don't know. Lord Desmond Leslie as another explanation. Now, his, I told him at the time, I said, but surely your Venusians were etheric people and materialized because here Venus is probably very hot. And he said, they were no goddamn spooks. I said, no, nor was um, resurrected Christ. You know, he was fully materialized, but I'm not talking. No, he, he wouldn't listen to that. He didn't want to confuse the issue. I think that was it. He just didn't want to confuse. Because I'm also certain that some of his trips were taken astrally. Which, as St. Paul says, is so real you can't tell the difference. St. Paul says, whether I was in the body or out of the body, I know not. I think the most important thing I learned from George Adamski is that we on Earth are not all that unique in the universe. The universe is populated with persons like ourselves, people at various stages of development. Uh, there are billions and billions of planets around billions and billions of suns, billions and billions of galaxies. We don't know any end to the universe. What George Adamski told me that it is reasonable to believe that there are people like ourselves on other planets. Now, if we think the conditions are inimical to human life on other planets, as for instance Venus, what do we know about higher dimensionality? So George revealed to me that there are vibrations above the vibrations that we are familiar with the vibrations which permit tangibility, the matter of touch. I would compare it, and he compared it, as to the vibrations in light. We have a spectrum, for instance, uh, ultraviolet on one side, infrared on the other, where the vibrations which we are familiar with in the center. There is also a spectrum of tangibility in the atom itself, and this is true all over the universe. And while we're familiar only with the vibrations which make the tangibility we're familiar with uh, possible on Earth, he was aware that there are other invisible tangibilities and the contact may be made. This ties in with the whole religious history of angels, for instance, from other places, of demonic uh, uh, creatures from other places. Uh, the universe is so much more complex than we had any idea of. He revealed me, to me, this type of a universe. Adamski's books were published worldwide, and shortly afterwards, he established a global network of friends on all continents. One of them was Major Hans Peterson of the Danish Air Force, who, after UFO observations on radar and conversations with American colleagues, became convinced that Earth is indeed visited by extraterrestrials. He organized a lecture for Adamski in Copenhagen and became convinced of the reality of his contacts. He was planning a world trip and he asked me to organize the Europe part of it. And at that time he came to my country. Now, at the day of his arrival, my son, Lars, and I went to the local airport to meet him. And since I knew the airport well, we went to a point where we could overlook the whole airfield. And 
uh, it was rather low weather when the aircraft came out of the clouds. We saw that the flying saucer was just uh, 20 or 30 meters behind it. And as soon as the aircraft was fully clear and ready to land, it went back up into the clouds. When I, uh, 10 minutes later, met George, I said, uh, there was a flying saucer following your aircraft for landing. He said, oh, yes, the boys always follow me. And uh, this he proved later on on his trip uh, through Europe. And we arranged a hotel for him in the outskirts at a, a small town which had a harbor. And uh, we knew that nobody could disturb him because nobody would know that he would be staying there. When they came uh, late afternoon or mid-afternoon and checked in, the receptionist said that there had been a young man calling for him. Everybody wondered, but George, he just smiled. Now he said, I would like to rest a little bit so you can come and pick me up again at six o'clock for this round trip. So they did. In this old-fashioned hotel, like in many other old-fashioned hotels, there were double doors to the rooms, one opening to the outside and one opening to the inside. So there's a, a space between the two doors. When the group came to pick up George, there was a ladder laying between the two doors. And uh, on the front side, you could read the word Adamski. So he opened the ladder, and inside was a message saying, Adamski, do not go to Finland this time. Trouble for you. And signed with six words. He phoned me and said, uh, I don't feel well of going to Finland because I got this warning and I persuaded him to wait because it could be somebody who trying to make some fun out of it. Next morning early he called me again and he said uh, I met a spaceman this morning, a man from Venus, and he handed me a small parcel which he asked me to develop to the Pope in Rome. So I will definitely not go to Finland and I'll also not go to Germany. So please make arrangements. And uh, I did. Meanwhile, our group in Copenhagen was a bit skeptical that a spaceman had been around in their uh, environment. So they went to the harbor where there was an old fisherman who used to fish very early in the morning. And they found him and asked him if he had been fishing this morning. And he said, yes, he had. And they asked him if anything special had happened, if he had talked to anybody, something like that. And he said, no. Oh, yes, he said, I talked to a funny American guy, but uh, then there was a young man calling for him. So he left and I saw they were talking together. He came to London. He'd been to Rome lecturing and um, he'd been on a European lecture tour where he met the Queen of Holland and there was a frightful row and the students tried to disrupt it. And his lectures were run by Lou Zinstag, the niece of Carl Jung, lovely lady, with Tim Good, you know, who's written a lot of very serious books. Well, after his Roman visit, he just stayed with us for a few days to relax and I kept the press away. And and we took our little boat out on the Thames, and while we were there, he brought out some money, and well, among it was a, what looked like a little gold coin. And um, he just casually said, um, that's a bit of gold no one's ever going to get off me. And I said, why, it's very nice. And he said, look at it, it was a little medal of Pope John who at that time was dying, John the 23rd. And he said, I saw him in Rome. He gave me this. I said, George, please. Nobody sees the Pope. He's dying. Tell me you've bicycled round the rings of Saturn. I'll probably believe you. <laughs> but I don't think you saw the Pope. He said, well, I did. And he gave me this, and I gave him a sealed packet from the space people. He sat up in bed, and I gave him this package. He said, oh, that's what I've been waiting.